All right, are you guys ready? We've got so many new followers. We're getting so many messages. We appreciate you all. I'm gonna do this video again. I'm gonna go into more detail to explain it for those that appreciate it and for those haters out there that seem to think they know something I don't, which is crap, but whatever. I'm gonna teach everyone exactly how this works. You ready? We'll start from the beginning. Okay, what you're looking at is highly figured Eastern maple, combination of hard maple, bird's eye, blister, curl, soft maple or red leaf maple, curly, beautiful, beautiful stuff, cut in seven quarter, which is 1.75 inches and also 12 quarter. Those two sizes are ideal for cutting guitar parts and it's universal. We can use it for other applications if need be, okay? This just came in, this stuff's been, been cut in the last month. We are going to get another month on these. We have fans, fans, fans that we allow air to flow through these stacks, larger stickers, two by twos, so it allows more airflow. We wanna get rid of some of that surface moisture, okay? Putting this wood in our kiln, green or fresh cut, is generally a bad idea. It's, it'll cause the wood to twist no matter how much we put it under pressure, okay? This wood, right out of the gate, I can turn the, the kiln started at 115 degrees. And it's generally cut in log form, long boards, and if you get a four or five inch end check, it's not gonna put you out of business. This wood here is West Coast Big Leaf Maple. And this wood is very different than Eastern Maple. So let's start at the beginning. This wood, because of where it's located, is harvested very differently than Eastern Maple. Located far out in the woods, in basically rainforest, and is cut 100, 150 pound master cant at a time. Basically as much as a human can pick up, lift, put on a little trailer on a four-wheeler and four-wheel the product right back to uh, civilization, okay? It happens to coincide with the rainy, it, it's always raining out there, okay? In a lot of the uh, areas of the Olympic Peninsula where this stuff comes from, it rains 100, 120, sometimes more days a year. Well, this is a problematic if you want to use this large skitter that weighs, you know, 50, 60,000 pounds. You can't get them in and out of the woods. So the only way to do it is one tree cutter at a time, one tree, and cut it into blocks. Okay. This is where this is really challenging for a guy, uh, for, for companies like Kimball Harwoods. They get cut in two foot sections primarily. Okay. You get a five, six inch end check on that wood. It's not junk. It's just not what your application is supposed to be for guitar parts, okay? So, add in the fact that this wood literally grows in a rainforest. It is by far the highest percentage of moisture when fresh cut. This is a problem because this wood, you cannot put in that kiln out of the gate at 115 degrees. If you do that, this wood will split, I promise you. I've done it, I know. So that's problem number one. Problem number two is because the wood is so high. It's the only maple I have ever probed. I had some quilt that probed at 70% moisture. That is insanely high. Well, with that much moisture, what's the other problem? Mold growth. Okay, so there's a lot of speculation. A lot of the information you read online about mold growth pertains to homes. It pertains to lumber that's been dried but has swelled. And they say that it's over just over 16% relative humidity in wood. Wood has the potential for mold growth. I would say, eh, 16 is not the end of the world. Uh, you get in the 20s, yep, it can happen, okay? Um, dew points, all that stuff. So I'm, I'm gonna spare you all those details, but we're gonna go more into this. Okay, we got a lot of messages from people saying, Oh, this doesn't work. Um, the, the, you know, it's listen, these freezers, okay. I spent 20 years of my life in food service. I know exactly what these are. These are commercial grade NSF certified freezers. They pull a vacuum, not like the vacuum in that chamber, which is a 10 horsepower, much, much uh, lower, but consistently. And this is how you know this the wood itself is completely encased. And I saw something earlier. Yeah, look, here you go. Look at that. Okay, that came from the wood. 
although it's a slow process, it still takes the surface moisture out of this wood. And why is that important? It, well, it's super important because again, this stuff is 50, 60, dear Lord, 70% moisture. The issue is I've got to take 30% of that moisture, 25, 30% of that moisture out. You have to. If you don't, you're going to run into all the problems. For sure, mold growth. Once that happens, forget it. It just grows. It gets out of control. You can't stop it. Okay? And then splitting. So I've got to get that moisture out through a process of taking these out, letting them slack out, which means purge from a frozen to a liquid state and then that water evaporates once it's not totally dry but definitely purged and the temperature comes back down to room temp you put them back you clean these out and you put them back in and do it all over again you do it multiple times guys it is a royal pain in the butt i only do it because i know it works okay and it's really important that we do this because if we don't we just have major problems with big leaf maple now for those people that say, oh, well, why, why doesn't the wood split? Okay, that's a good question. All right, so if that were the case, then virtually every tree, every maple tree in the Northeast would, would explode. And that does happen, guys. What that is, not so there's no confusion, I have literally heard out in the woods trees, uh, hard maples uh, exploding. It's rare, but that is a natural occurrence that happens when we get a cold snap out of nowhere. Okay, and it's it's specific trees. It's not all the trees. Okay, and the reason this wood, after it's been harvested, doesn't uh, explode or crack while it's in the freezer is because water expands. I think it's eleven or twelve percent uh, upwards. Uh, liquid expands when it turns into ice. Is because the cellulose in this wood naturally expands and contracts. Okay. And so the term that people should get familiar with is sublimation, okay? And that is the process in which this turns, it takes the moisture out of the wood and it in turn becomes in the end a vapor and it evacs, okay? So yes, this is very time consuming. I wanted to do this video again. Because, again, we've got a lot of new followers. I'm very grateful for it. Uh, but, man, I have had to explain myself, send links, which I don't mind doing. Um, but, it, but it seems like a lot of new people coming in and they kind of missed the post that we've done. I have been doing this for years, guys. I'm not just doing this for my own because it, it feels good. I'm doing it because it works. It's a lot of work to get this wood kiln safe. I have a kiln full of this stuff right now. This is all new, guys. So any of the previous videos you saw, no, no, this is all new. We just cut this literally three days ago. Okay, and there's a lot more coming in. So this is the part that, that I know throws people for a loop. But guys, I learned this from an old timer out on the West Coast. Uh, I just so happens I was in his factory, his, his big warehouse, and he had a couple of these in the back. And and uh, I, I questioned him. Thank God I did. I was kind of shocked why he had these in there. And then he went through the whole process. And lo and behold, it actually works. Uh, more so with quilted maple than flame maple. Here's another tidbit that's important to know. And I don't know why this is. But quilted maple will hold its moisture more than flame maple will. And you especially have to do this with quilted maple. Because if you don't, that mold growth gets so out of control that you almost make the wood junk. So flame maple, big leaf... Um, isn't as prone to it. However, it does something really strange. Towards the end of the drying process, when you get it down to about 20%, it does not want to give up that last 10%. I do not know why. Um, and so this is why this, this is a three-month process from standing tree to finished guitar parts. Okay, thanks for hanging in there, guys.